Hess Corporation. Those of you who are New Jersey residents probably know Hess pretty well. Uh, you can't drive on most of the roads without encountering a service station. But uh, Hess is a uh, large independent integrated oil company. What does that mean? That means that we do exploration and production, but we also do marketing and refining. The company announced a few months ago that we are moving away from the downstream business, marketing and refining, and focused exclusively on exploration and production. And we operate in about 20 countries. I think, do you want me to continue or to talk a little bit about CSR? Okay. Uh, so, very quickly, um, I've been at Hess about six years. And when I first came to Hess, um, I think the company defined CSR largely as the kind of traditional corporate philanthropy, high impact, the traditional philanthropy that the Rockefellers might have brought you or that companies uh, were very focused on doing in the 80s and 90s, which is unusual for an energy company. Because when you think about the kind of operations we have and the kind of impacts we have, both social and potentially environmental and economic, um, one would think that, uh, that that a company in our space would embrace a different definition. At this point, um, I think we've evolved a great deal in six years, and I think we define social responsibility not as what we do with our profits or the good deeds that we do, but how we make those profits, how we operate how we're managed, and how we're governed. At the end of the day, I can create all kinds of policies and wonderful programs in my office in New York uh, that will sit on a shelf in our operations. Uh, for me, you know, it is really important that I don't own stakeholder engagement or social risk management or strategic philanthropy myself or my team, some of whom are here. It's important that our operations guys do this, not, oh, God, it's another thing I have to do for New York, check a box, but, hey, this is really part of the way we operate. Um, and so that is really what we're striving for. Fully integrating social responsibility, not as a, another box to tick, but this is a great way to operate. What's interesting is when I was hired, our chairman, whose name is on the door, which makes social responsibility very interesting in a company like ours, um, said to me, look, you know, we're not a huge company. We're not an Exxon. Uh, yet we compete for many of the same assets, many of the same business spaces that they do. So we need a differentiator. And for us, our management team believes that social responsibility is that differentiator uh, in terms of competitive advantage and the value proposition. Our management team would like a country to call another country and say, hey, you should really look at HES the next time you do a big one. They're a great technical partner and they'll leave your country better off for having been there. And that's truly what our management is, is trying to get to. And so um, my team and I are kind of charged with responsibility of actually operationalizing that. So, I'll turn it over to my colleague. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and uh, we'll talk more later. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And, and many of you were here this morning and heard the opening remarks in reference to Wells Fargo and how we view corporate social responsibility. So what I'll say is from a on the ground level, which is what I manage, and Wells Fargo's vision is that everything we do is done locally. So we're working within the, the company where we sit. For us, each of us feels we operate our own business. Although we have the, the corporate umbrella of how we will operate on the social responsibility, how does that reflect in your immediate community? And how do you get to an end result of corporate responsibility in your immediate community? So I have the great pleasure of managing that for New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. And it's not only philanthropy, it's also team member engagement. It's team members' philanthropy because our team members are the most giving team members we have. And we have a program every year during September where they're allowed and can research any 501c3 nonprofit, give their own personal dollars. If it's an educational nonprofit, it's matched by the company. And many times they are. And it's really amazing how our team members step up, find the organizations they want to support. In addition to that, what we found is as we research people that research our company coming to work for our company, their question usually is, how socially responsibly are, responsible are you? What organizations are you supporting? What's your vision for the company along those lines? So we found that recruiting has really taken a little bit of a different spin because that usually was not a question in that room when people were being recruited, but now that's a main question in that room. So we know that we're getting more people on board. And as I mentioned this morning, it's not only the managers, but we want to make sure our team members are also engaged and we're getting more people on board that are also engaged around um, social responsibility. Thank you. Um, appreciate the, the opportunity to come and chat with you. I think part of our, our job in this uh, one of this closing panel is to put a little bit of a 
description so you can see what it looks like inside a, a large or even small medium sized uh, corporation in the U.S. I um, have been at Campbell Soup Company for four and a half years. My job title is public affairs and corporate responsibility, but, but I was hired to create uh, a business strategy around, at the time, they called it corporate social responsibility and sustainability. Um, the, I, the, the position, the, the functions evolved over time, but what I tried to do when I got there and bring some of the learnings I had from my last opportunity in a completely different sector, and to build an integrated strategy for the company that let them take advantage of their strengths, what they did better than any other company on the planet, and put it to work in the marketplace and in the workplace and in society to create benefit, measurable benefit, both to our shareholders, to our employees, and to society. Um, we created a long-term framework, a 10-year framework for what we we're going to do. I've been, I'm on my second CEO, Denise Morrison is the current CEO. Doug Koenig was the CEO when I was hired. Um, Campbell Soup, it, that brand name is known all over the world, but the company also is Pepperidge Farm and B8 and Pace and Crago and Arnott's and most recently Bolt House Farms. But we took this 10 year framework and in conversation with the CEO, I wanted 10 year targets that would set up a kind of tension in our system and create some strategy that we could actually execute on more than one year. And he wanted a destination target in each of my areas. We built on the company's mission, the company's heritage around nourishing, and we focused on nourishing consumers, nourishing the marketplace, nourishing the planet or the environment, nourishing our employees in the workplace, and nourishing our neighbors in the community. And each of those had very clear, for example, in the environment, it was to cut the environmental footprint of our product portfolio in half over this decade, measured by greenhouse gases and water use per ton of food produced. In the neighbors in the community side, we tried to pick a very tangible target and move from counting activities, how many volunteer hours, how many dollars, to a social impact. Can we actually change the health of young people in our hometown communities? Can we reduce hunger and childhood obesity by 50% in Canada? And some of you are, because you're close enough to where we are, you may have seen some of that work that we've been doing down there the last couple of years. In the, inside the companies, how can we get every single employee engaged? How do they know from a personal um, management by objectives and even in their recognition systems and their pay? that they are involved in the strategy to advance CSR and sustainability. And in the marketplace is to continue to drive in this challenging in this environment to drive healthy choices. We need to move the needle on healthy choices globally for the marketplace. So we can actually show and report that number both in terms of products but also in terms of sales and percentage of sales in the marketplace. And then really, I mean, hopefully you're going to hear it coming out by now, at least you're listening to this all day, is all of the terms that we use are just kind of roadblocks to us getting things done. Um, we're trying to integrate a business strategy. We're trying to make our business better. And uh, so we don't use the terms a lot, CSR and sustainability inside the company. We use the terms that we're managed to inside the company. And the more we can integrate this, um, the easier it gets. The easier it gets to replicate itself as we go around the world. And that's my goal. That's kind of what I'm trying to do with Campbell. So you're 